day 9 examination and testing this is the ninth topic in awareness course on asme 31.3 we have already covered these eight topics introduction material requirement pressure design loads and stresses welding and joining flange and bolting piping flexibility and support fluid service requirements in this topic we are going to cover these three sub topics non destructive examination hydrostatic testing procedure acceptance criteria for examination and testing so as usual we'll start with safety talk then after covering these three topics we'll have a quiz of 20 mcqs along with the correct answers we'll discuss the explanations also so let's welcome our friend peter who will be going through these three topics the explanations and details we'll start first with safety talk so let's begin the safety talk Hello everyone. Today we'll discuss lockout/tagout procedures for equipment maintenance to ensure your safety during maintenance tasks. Essential step: Before starting any maintenance work on equipment, always perform a lockout/tagout procedure. This is a crucial step to prevent accidental startup. Identify energy sources. Identify all energy sources that power the equipment. This includes electrical, hydraulic, pneumatic, and mechanical energy. Isolate with lockout devices. Use appropriate lockout devices to isolate each energy source. This will prevent the equipment from being energized during maintenance. Use tags after lockout. Use tags to indicate that the equipment is under maintenance and should not be operated. These tags serve as a warning to others. Verify energy release before you begin maintenance. Double check that all stored energy has been released. This includes bleeding air pressure, discharging capacitors, etc. Authorized personnel, only trained and authorized personnel should perform lockout/tagout procedures. This ensures that it is done correctly and safely. Remember, lockout/tagout is a critical safety measure to protect yourself and others from unexpected equipment startup. Always follow these procedures diligently. Hello and welcome back to our 30-day beginner course on ASME B31.3. Today, we're delving into an important aspect of ensuring piping system integrity: non-destructive examination methods. Non-destructive examination (NDE) methods are crucial for detecting flaws and defects in materials and welds without causing damage. Let's explore these methods in detail. Visual inspection: This involves carefully examining the surface of materials and welds for any visible defects, such as cracks or corrosion. Radiographic testing: X-rays are used to create images of the internal structure of materials and welds. This method is effective for detecting hidden flaws. Ultrasonic testing: Ultrasonic waves are sent through materials, and their reflections are used to identify internal defects and thickness measurements. Magnetic particle testing: This method uses magnetic fields and particles to identify surface and near-surface defects in ferromagnetic materials. Dye penetrant testing: A liquid dye is applied to the surface. and it penetrates into any surface breaking defects excess dye is wiped off and a developer is applied is applied to make defects visible eddy current testing electrical currents are induced in the material and changes in the currents can indicate surface and subsurface defects these nde methods help ensure the quality and safety of piping systems by identifying potential flaws before they lead to failure to failures That's all for today's session. In our next topic, we'll discuss hydrostatic testing procedures. So, stay tuned and keep expanding your knowledge. Hello and welcome back to our 30-day beginner course on ASME B31.3. Today, we're diving into hydrostatic testing procedures, a critical step in ensuring the integrity of piping systems. Hydrostatic testing involves pressurizing a piping system with a liquid, usually usually water, to evaluate its strength and detect potential leaks. 
Let's walk through the key steps of this procedure. Filling, the piping system is filled with the testing liquid, typically water. This prepares the system for pressurization. Pressurization is gradually increased to the desired test level. This puts stress on the system to assess its ability to hold the pressure. Stabilization, once the desired pressure is reached, it is held steady for a specified period. This allows the system to settle under the test conditions. Inspection, visual examination is conducted to check for any leaks or deformation in the piping system. This step ensures the system's integrity. Depressurization, the pressure is gradually released and the system is brought back to normal operating conditions. The testing liquid is drained from the system and the system is prepared for regular operation. Hydrostatic testing helps identify weak points in the piping system, ensuring its safety and reliability. That's all for today's session. In our next topic, we'll discuss acceptance criteria for examination and testing. So, stay tuned and keep expanding your knowledge. Hello and welcome back to our 30-day beginner course on ASME B31.3. Today, we're delving into an important aspect of ensuring the quality of examination and testing, acceptance criteria. Acceptance criteria are the standards we use to determine whether the results of examination and testing meet the required quality levels. Let's break down the key points. Define standards, acceptance criteria are like a set of rules that define what is considered acceptable. These standards ensure that the examined components and test results align with the desired quality. Establish thresholds, these are limits or boundaries set for various defects or characteristics. If the results fall within these limits, they are deemed acceptable. If they exceed these thresholds, further action may be required. Determine actions, based on the examination and, te and testing results, decisions are made on whether the components meet the acceptance criteria. If they do, the components are deemed suitable for use. If not, appropriate actions like re-examination or corrective measures are taken. It's important to note that acceptance criteria may vary depending on the type of material, component, or service. These criteria help ensure that only components meeting the required quality are integrated into the piping system. That's all for today's session. In our next topic, we'll discuss measures to prevent corrosion in, in piping systems. So, stay tuned and keep expanding your knowledge.
thanks peter for a detailed explanation on these three subtopics so by this we have completed our uh, examination and testing uh, uh, topic where we talked about safety then these three subtopic uh, detailing then we had a quiz of 20 mcqs correct answers and explanation so now let's see what we are going to cover in on day 9 we'll talk about corrosion protection the format will remain same safety talk then these three subtopics then we'll have a quiz of mcq 20 mcqs we'll look at correct answers and explanations so thanks peter for the explanation and thank you all for watching see you in the next part